Hi, this is Debbie and in this video I will share with you 10 great kitchen tips you need to know. So tip number one, as you can see and probably guess, is have all your ingredients ready before you start cooking or baking. That way it gets easy and smoothly and you don't have to run around looking for stuff while the stuff is boiling or mixing or whatever. So, Get your stuff ready, rule number one or tip number one. Tip number two, let me move this away, which goes hand in hand with what I was sharing with tip number one. Um, have, let's go back here. Have your baking pan greased before you start even mixing the batter. Uh, because as soon as the batter is finished and needs to go into the baking pan, it also needs to go in the oven. So you don't want to have the dough being in the bowl for quite a while until you actually have buttered or greased your baking pan. So make sure that before you start mixing anything, grease or butter your baking pan. Okay, here is hack number three. When you're doing things on your countertop, baking, cooking, cutting things up, Always have a bowl for trash. It makes no sense to run to the trash can every time you do something for every egg. Just collect the whole thing just in here. If you have eggshells, if you have apple peels, anything. And then when you're done with all your work, then you can go to the trash can and, and dump it. Or if you don't have your compost, you can put this in a compost. And if you don't have a bowl, you can easily get one and, and go to Dollar Tree and just get a cheap one. Anything really works as long as it doesn't have any holes, but I think this is really a necessary thing to have. That leads us to tip number four. This is tip number four. A common problem in many households is that the cutting board is very slippery on the countertop. There is two easy solutions to it. Number one, you could use a wet paper towel just like this. Put it on here and put this on top and then when you try to cut something like an apple you see it's not sliding around so very stable the second solution is the solution i use personally you can get a carpet pad either at um, ikea or at dollar tree and you can cut it to size for the um, for the cutting board you put it on here and as you can see right here it's not slippery at all that way you're going to avoid any accidents you might have if you don't have this underneath your cutting board. Tip number five. Did you ever bake a cake and it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to be? Even though you followed the, the recipe correctly? Sometimes it's as simple as not measuring the flour correctly. Let me show you how to measure it correctly. I have a little scoop here in my flour bin. I'll fill it up all the way to the top. And then you can either use a knife or something flat. I will use my scoop because it has a nice flat edge. And all you do is just scoop all the flour away so it's an even top. Let me show it to you again. Scoop it up, make it a little fuller than it's supposed to be. And then take the flat side and just scoop it off. And that's all there is to it. Tip number six. Have you ever wondered if your baking powder is still good? Maybe it's been a while since you have baked last and we're wondering if you could still use it. Well, here's an easy solution. How to find out if your baking powder is still good. Use a bowl of water and then take about a half a teaspoon of baking powder and just pop it into the water like this. And if you see it fizzing like this, then you know that the baking powder is still good to bake. And this is how you can tell. How do you fit an aluminum foil perfectly into a baking pan, for example, if you want to make a meatloaf. Let me show you a little trick. 
I'm gonna fold this over. Then I take the aluminum foil on top and just go right along the sides. Put it all the way down here on the sides as well. Make sure you got it all. Like this. And look, this is what it looks like. Then you flip it back over. And voila, perfect fit ready to be in used. Tip number eight. Some recipes call for honey and it can be a little bit frustrating sometimes because when you measure the honey, it's kind of st gets stuck in the measuring spoon. Here's a solution to make this process a little easier. So all you have to do, <clears throat> you take whatever measuring spoon size you need you take a little butter spray or oil, spray the inside, and you take the honey, fill it up, and then look at that. How easy the honey comes out. You see that? No residue, it came out, out of the spoon, no scraping, no nothing. Everything's out. And that's how you can do it, very simple. Tip number nine. Have you ever tried to make a cake which asked for room temperature butter and you realize you forgot to take the butter out of the refrigerator? Well, I have a quick and easy solution for you which takes about 10 minutes to make the butter room temperature. All you do is you take a bowl which fits over the butter. You take some boiled water, fill the bowl up with it, as so. Then you pour this water back out. Put the butter on a plate, take that steamy bowl over the butter and let it sit for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you lift up the bowl. You see that the butter has softened and it's not perfectly room temperature butter, ready to be used for your cake. Did you ever bake something and in the middle of baking you realized that you didn't have any powder sugar in the house? Well, not to worry, I'm gonna show you here a really quick tip on how to make your own powder sugar. So all you need is a food kind of processor, which I have a little ninja here. You need one cup of regular sugar and one tablespoon of cornstarch. So here, all you do, just gonna blend it. And voila, you got powdered sugar. Look at that. Perfect and ready for anything requiring powdered sugar. I hope you found some value in this video and learned some tips you did not know about yet. Leave me a comment, like and subscribe. See you next time.